If you've just dipped your toes into the world of Amazon FBA and you're looking to learn as quickly as possible how you can make your first £10,000 selling your own products, then get your notepad and pen out because we're going to be running through step by step what you need to do to get set up, find a product and to start selling so that you can start earning. If you've not come across me before, I'm a seven figure Amazon FBA seller and I practice what I preach. So all of the steps that we're going to be running through, I myself have taken them and the proof is in the pudding. Here is a photo of my sales from the last 30 days. So let's dive into my blueprint for how to make your first 10,000 pounds with Amazon FBA. Every seller needs an Amazon seller account. And in order to get one of those, you're going to need to have your own business, either a limited company or a sole trader. Most people choose to be a limited company because it's more efficient when it comes to extracting cash, i.e. you'll be paying less tax. If you want to learn more about the differences between a limited company and a sole trader, then you can check out this video here. Setting up a limited company, it might sound like a difficult and overwhelming task, but it's actually pretty straightforward and cheap to do. Option one is to head to the government's limited company creation site, fill out the form and then pay just 12 pounds. Or option two is to get a company like Awesome to do it for you. Awesome are a digital accountancy firm that specialize in working with Amazon FBA sellers. And if you use the link in the description of this video, there's an offer for them to create a company for you for the princely sum of just one pound. Regardless of whether you choose to become a limited company or a sole trader, you're still going to need an accountant. So it's well worth speaking with Awesome in any event. Once you've got your limited company set up, you're going to need to set up a business bank account. And that's because it's required if you want to start selling on Amazon. Whilst there are plenty of options out there for you to choose from, in my experience, a lot of them are slow and often reject new businesses that haven't started trading yet. And that's actually kind of ridiculous, isn't it, when you think about it. But to avoid pulling out all of your hair in frustration, follow my guidance, which is to skip the high street banks and go for a digital bank such as Tide or Wise instead, both of which are accepted by Amazon. As soon as your application is approved and you've got your account number, sort code and debit card ready, you can move on to the more exciting part of the process, which is creating your Amazon sellers account. Whilst you might think that the process of creating an Amazon sellers account is going to be a piece of cake, don't get too complacent because the process of registering for a seller account, it does actually trip a lot of people up, which results in them being blocked from selling before they've even started. So here are my two biggest tips to stop that happening to you. Firstly, when asked what type of seller you are, select either sole proprietor, which means sole trader, or private entity, which means you're a limited company. The other answers 99 times out of 100 are not going to be relevant to you and so should not be selected. Secondly, whenever you fill anything out in the application form, whether it be your name, your date of birth or your address, make sure that you triple check that there are no spelling mistakes and that all of your details match word for word. Failing to do that is going to mean that you won't pass verification and therefore you'll be unable to sell. But provided that you take your time when filling out the registration form and you ensure that you have your bank details, your company name and your debit card to hand, you should be accepted and ready to start selling in no time at all. Finding a product to sell on Amazon is more than likely going to take you at least two or three weeks because learning the different methods and thought processes behind product research 
it all takes time. There are plenty of techniques that you can follow in order to discover different product ideas. And one of my favorite methods is with Helium 10's black box tool, which is a bit like Google, except instead of being shown websites, you're shown products. To use it, simply create an account with Helium 10, which you can currently do for free using one of my links, log into your account, and then browse to the black box tool. Select the categories that you like the look of, input the target monthly revenue and the price point of the product that you want to sell, and then press search. You'll then be shown lots of different product ideas that have existing demand on Amazon, which acts as a great starting point for the next stage of the journey to making you your first £10,000. And that's going to be verifying whether the product that you've found is going to be profitable and give you an opportunity to improve upon the existing offer. No matter what product it is that you want to sell on Amazon, if you want to achieve success, then you absolutely need to ensure that the product has existing demand and customers are already buying it on Amazon. It has a profit margin of at least 15% and an opportunity for you to improve upon the existing offering versus other sellers. If you're scratching your head wondering how you might go about verifying whether a product that you found meets all of these criteria, then don't worry because some of it's actually easier than you might think. To assess the sales demand of any product on Amazon, all you need to do is download Helium 10's Chrome extension, search for your product, and then press the Helium 10 X-ray button. You'll then be presented with a pop-up that will tell you exactly how many units are being sold each month by every single seller, as well as how much money they're generating. Ideally, the minimum amount of sales that you should expect to see should be three times your monthly profit target. To verify profitability, you can simply search for your product on a supplier website such as Alibaba, and then ask a supplier for the unit price, and then use my free profit calculator to see how much money you're likely to make for every sale that you generate. The hardest part of product research is the third piece of essential criteria, which is finding an opportunity to improve. There is no easy way to go about this other than to put in the time, look through your competition's listings, and then assess whether you think things like the quality of their product, their listing, branding, and so on can all be improved and beaten by you. If you manage to find a product that ticks my three essential criteria of demand, profitability, and improvement, then you've potentially found yourself a product that is gonna be helping you to generate your first 10,000 pounds. Once you've found something that you want to sell with Amazon FBA, you're going to need to source a supplier that not only makes a high quality product, but also has a good level of English and responds to you quickly. Most suppliers in the Eastern world will advertise their services on a website called Alibaba. So search for your product on there, message as many suppliers as you can find, ask for product samples, and then once you've received them, assess the quality, rank each supplier by price, communication and quality, and based on all of those, decide which supplier you want to move forward with for your main order. In terms of your order size, that's going to come down to your budget and what you're comfortable spending. Ideally, for your first order, you should have at least two months worth of stock. So use Helium 10's X-ray tool to assess what that is likely to be, and then determine whether you're comfortable ordering that amount or if you want to reduce it slightly. Every product that is sold on Amazon needs to have a product listing and that comprises of a title, summary bullet points, description and pictures, all items that the customer is going to look through before deciding whether they want to make a purchase. Now, when putting your products listing together, don't be tempted to just jam in a load of keywords that don't make sense in an attempt to improve your product's SEO and visibility. Instead, think about the problems that your product solves, why the customer should choose you over your competition, and then write that down in a compelling 
and logical manner. Of course, including relevant keywords is an important task to do, but it must make sense. If you need help understanding the best keywords to include throughout your listing, use Helium 10's keyword and listing optimization tools. Now for your images, as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So when designing your product pictures, don't skimp and go for low quality. Instead, hire a local photographer in the area or use a 3D render designer off Fiverr to get some high quality pictures of your product and then use the services of an image editor to put together a set of compelling images that will make the customer desperate to buy. You can usually find talented designers on sites such as Fiverr and Upwork, but just make sure that you check their reviews and their portfolio before you go ahead and make a hire. Typically, when you place an order with your supplier, they're going to request a deposit from you upfront and that can range from 30 to 50% based on the product and the supplier that you're dealing with. Your final balancing payment is then going to be due once the goods are ready for dispatch, which could be anywhere from four to eight weeks later, depending on how many units you've ordered and the complexity of the product being manufactured. Now, if you found your supplier on Alibaba, then you can go and pay your deposit with your credit card for an extra layer of protection or if you want to do it a slightly cheaper way, you can use a bank such as Wise to make an international bank transfer. Once your supplier has confirmed that the goods are ready for dispatch and you've made your final payment, you'll need to tell Amazon that your product is ready and it's on its way to their warehouse. To do this, log into Seller Central, browse to the Shipments tab, and then click Send to Amazon. You'll then need to input the number of units that you're sending and the weight and dimensions of each box that's going to be holding all of your products. And once you've completed that, you'll be given Amazon's shipping labels, which you'll need to send over to your supplier to stick onto each box. If you're unsure of how many boxes are going to be sent or the dimensions and weight of each, ask your supplier for something known as the packing list. And that is basically a sheet that contains all of the relevant shipping information that you're going to need. Once you've created your shipping plan, you'll then need to arrange the transportation and shipment of your product, which you can do through a shipping agent or freight forwarder, or if you'd rather take the slightly more expensive but more convenient route, you can ask your supplier to arrange it for you instead. Depending on whether you choose to ship by air or sea, your product should arrive at Amazon's warehouse within two to six weeks. And once it does, you'll receive an email notification saying that your goods have been checked in and that in a matter of days, you're becoming a official Amazon seller. After a couple of days of waiting for Amazon to receive your product, a number of units should become available to customers to purchase. Once that happens, you'll need to do a number of things to increase your product's visibility and your conversion in order to drive sales and profitability. First of all, you'll need to try to get a few product reviews and you can do that by enrolling into something called Amazon's Vine program or if you don't mind breaking a rule or two, subtly asking a few distant friends and family to buy your product and then leave you a review. Reviews play a huge part in how successful a product is. So if you can get a couple lined up and published in your first week of selling, then the number of customers browsing your listing and then deciding to buy should increase by a noticeable amount. To get your product seen by as many people as possible, you'll then need to make use of Amazon's advertising platform, which is pay per click i.e. you're only charged for an ad once a customer clicks onto your listing. Now, if you're new to Amazon and you've never experienced pay-per-click advertising before, my advice is to create an automatic campaign. And that is essentially something that lets Amazon determine when and where you appear in the search results. But if you're a bit more advanced and you have experience of advertising on other platforms, 
then I'd go ahead and start to look at manual campaign types instead. Regardless of which one you go with, start with a modest budget of £10 or $10 per day and review your campaign's performance every single day by looking at the keywords that are getting the most clicks. If they're irrelevant or costing you too much, then you can remove them from your campaigns so that you don't get charged for them anymore, saving a bit of cash. Finally, to increase your product's conversion even further during your launch period, my advice is to start selling with a lower price point than your competition. If you can give customers an immediate reason to buy through a high quality listing and an offer that is at an amazing price point, then they'll be left with no choice but to purchase from you, which will increase your sales, your conversion, and ultimately contribute to you appearing higher in these search results and generating more profits over time. Once you've successfully started selling your product on Amazon, you'll quickly need to decide if the product sales have matched your expectations or have the potential to and whether you'll be placing a subsequent order with your supplier. You should have enough sales data to make a decision on this within three or four weeks. So to avoid running out of stock and having to go through a relaunch process, have a chat with your supplier, provide any feedback from customer reviews that could make your product even better, and then discuss reordering. It's always worth trying to negotiate a better price with your supplier on your second order, which they may be open to if you manage to build some sort of relationship. A second order should ideally be sized so that you're able to stay in stock for at least two months. So calculate what this is likely to be, determine if you can afford it and if you're comfortable placing an order of that size and then go ahead and communicate it to your supplier. A second order is likely to be much more profitable than your first, given that you'll have reviews, an organic rank position, and have hopefully ironed out any issues that may have led to refund requests. So just bear that in mind when you're assessing whether you want to go ahead with a follow-up order. Keeping on top of your business's sales and profitability is an essential step to take. So make sure that you review your sales and your profit that you're making every single day or at the very least every week. You can do this manually with the help of my free profit calculator, which I'll link below, or an easier and more accurate way is by using a tool such as Shopkeeper, which will basically calculate your profit after every single fee that there is. If you find that you're not making as many sales or as much profit as you expected, you'll need to find the root cause and then fix the problem as soon as possible. Common issues that I come across for underperformance are a poor quality listing that doesn't communicate the benefits of the product very well, an offer that isn't compelling enough to give the customer a reason to buy from you versus your competition, and a price point that isn't attractive enough or an advertising campaign that isn't optimized and is overspending on irrelevant keywords. Whilst that might sound like a lot of things that can go wrong, the good news is that all of those things can be fixed, but it does take some time and effort. So if you do identify any problems, get to work on solving them so that you can turn your performance around and take your product to your first £10,000. After following those 10 steps that I've just run through, there is no reason why you won't be able to hit that awesome milestone of £10,000 from selling products on Amazon, just like me and like hundreds of students that I've coached. Whilst it might seem like a lot to take in and something that's quite difficult to follow, believe me, once you've gone through the process, you will look back and realize just how simple it all actually is. I started selling with Amazon FBA in 2018 with no experience and no creativity. And I've since gone on to create a six figure profit generating business every single year. And if I can do that, so can you. To help increase the chances of you hitting that 10,000 pound milestone with your first product, you can download an Amazon seller step-by-step -step checklist for free by visiting the link in the description below. Let me know how you guys get on in the comments. Remember to subscribe for more Amazon FBA related content 
and I will see you next time.